Final Fantasy XI prides itself in its mystery, the details behind its numerous complex calculations never fully revealed to the public eye, none more so than Treasure Hunter. Possibly the most famous trait in all of Van Adeel, theories have existed literally in all manner of ridiculousness about how the various strengths of this thiefy goodness might apply actually in-game. Well, I'm here to tell you that the mystery is a mystery no longer. If you're new here, this is Hunt for Games, uh, chatting as usual about my favorite game of all time, Final Fantasy XI. If you want to add your thoughts, come stop by and say hi on Twitch. We stream every Tuesday and Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Link down in the description below. A few weeks ago, Square Enix held a Q&A, answering a number of player questions, uh, honestly, mostly with the response, we have no plans for this, or that's interesting, this is something we're not really thinking of looking into in the future. <laughs> But if there's one question I would have thought that they would perfectly dodge, <laughs> it was how Treasure Hunter worked. Nope. No, instead they provided a detailed graph and chart explaining in exact percentages drop rates and how they're changed with various strengths of Treasure Hunter on hand. What? So let's chat about this a minute because this is actually a really big deal and I've held off for a month because I wanted to let the information sink in and sort of really figure out how I feel about all this. because. There's really two sides to this. One, the actual information, how Treasure Hunter works and how it affects the players. It's interesting. Uh, we'll definitely chat about that first. And two, the nature of them sharing it with us. And mostly why I, I don't really think it's a good idea. First, let's get into the details themselves. Before we go over this, let me know in the comments how you've always thought that Treasure Hunter worked. In my mind, there was always like slots for extra items that weren't there unless you had Treasure Hunter. Like if there could be three beehive chips that could drop, Treasure Hunter pools that have four beehive chips that could drop. And then maybe a higher chance within those new slots that something rare or valuable could drop. I don't know. That's how I thought it worked. But of course, not right at all. Not even close. No, not this time. Now, I'm going to overlay these charts that I'm looking at in the video. And, and honestly, we're not going to spend too much time with the drop rate chart most of the time with this, uh, this graph of, of percentages because I think it's a little bit more useful but the chart does kind of express one thing pretty well. Treasure Hunter helps a lot in the beginning for crappy items. Not as much as you continue to increase in tier. I mean diminishing returns is kind of the name of the game with Final Fantasy 11 though so that's, that's not like a crazy thing to think but it's weird to see it in numbers. But as for the actual numbers, I mean, mostly it comes down to, I don't really know what items in the game are labeled as these very common, common, uncommon, rare, very rare, super rare, and ultra rare. I also didn't realize there was an ultra rare. I'm terrified of ever finding the item that is 0.1% drop rate. What is that? Let me know in the comments if you know what it is. That's awful. Now, that is where, just at a glance, that's where Treasure Hunter 14 is the most valuable. Going from 0.1% to 1.5% is still an awful drop rate. But that's still what, like a 15 times increase? Is that even correct? I think that's right, yeah. 15 times increase in overall drop rate. That's that's huge. Compare that to tier one, very common. 24% to 80% is is what, like three and a half? Just under, it's like 3.4, 3.33. It is exactly three and a third, damn. But that's literally for, you know, zero treasure hunter all the way up to max 14 treasure hunter treasure hunter base level one sub job at level 75 that, that's what we're talking about here that doubles very common and common doubles ultra rare but everything in between is sort of just like mild in increases uncommon only goes up by two more percent rare only goes up by one percent very rare only 0.5 percent i mean i guess you could say that overall the drop rate for rare items increases by 20% of its previous drop rate. This is why I hate talking about numbers like this, but I mean, essentially, you've gone up by a percent, which is 20% of the overall 5%. Actually, let's do that real quick. Very common and common, increased by 100% of their original drop rate, 24% plus another 24%. Uncommon, rare, increased by 20% of their original drop rate, 10% plus 20%, 2% equals 12% total. I'm not saying this well, but are you following? I hope so. Very rare and super rare increased by an overall 50% of the original drop rate. It goes from 1% to 1.5%, 0.5% to 0.75%. 
And then Ultra Rare brings back the 100% increase with 0.1% going to 0.2%. That's just Treasure Hunter 1, and we could dig into the various tiers below that. But overall, it, it shows what's going to be kind of annoying to most people, because I bet many items in the game are going to fall into that uncommon, rare, and very rare categories, that if the items are in that space, low amounts of Treasure Hunter aren't helping you out all that much, or basically at all. Now, if you have Treasure Hunter 14, you're a level 99 thief with everything going for you. Yeah, you increase the uncommon by overall about, you know, three times its original drop rate, a little bit more, four times for rare, ten times for very rare. That's pretty cool. But realistically, I think the super rare and ultra rare are pretty uncommon drop rates. And very common and common yeah are, are big boosts but they also have the most significant boosts from like the initial adding of treasure hunter and treasure hunter too but I, i'm expecting that stuff to be like beehive chips i'd be curious what something like silk thread is is that common or uncommon probably common but my best guess would be that most most like notorious monster items let's say the leaving boots probably <laughs> probably fall under those middle three, uncommon, rare, or very rare. Meaning that all the time you're like, I have to go get my treasure hunter. You were basically increasing your chance of getting it by 2%, 1%. I, I mean, okay. I think that's why a lot of people were so frustrated when they initially saw this chart, is because while there are huge benefits to having treasure hunter in certain scenarios, for the most of the reason that people I think have, have honed in on like, I need it for this, I don't know how useful it's been, which is funny. But enough staring at this chart. Now let's talk about the aspect of actually sharing it. So I briefly joked about this in last week's video, discussing hidden and latent effects in Final Fantasy XI and why they made the game so special from an equipment perspective. I even pasted the chart in the video as part of the joke. Check that out if you haven't, by the way. I, I love those stupid hidden and latent effects. Link in the description below. But it was funny because I got so many comments being like, dude, it's hilarious that you brought up treasure hunter and how like you'll never know how it works because because they actually shared the info recently so i apparently really need to work on my sarcastic delivery really channel some inner deeper purpose to kind of push out that sarcasm but we'll get there regardless i brought it up then because so much of what makes Dana deal special is it's it's his mystery and secret nature abilities don't have stats described on them spells don't have descriptions outlining how much damage they'll do how much protection they'll offer the player they just give brief, silly descriptions. The details that we do know and are on Wikipedia entries and, and game guides are from years of player examination, experience, and testing. MMOs are surrounded and formed by numbers, like any RPG. I mean, ultimately, at the core of it, it's just dice rolls. That's all it's ever been. But by putting them on the back burner, in many ways, Eleven continues to drive home its core idea that the experience is more about you interacting with with the world the enemies and the other players of vanadil it's not about the numbers the numbers help you get there but that's just a lens through which you can experience and see this amazing place many mmos kind of tend to get bogged down by numbers in my opinion and become nothing but a, a damage parsing efficiency game well that's certainly fun in its own way I don't want to knock it, it doesn't give me the same passion that I have about Eleven because it just becomes like spreadsheets. Now that's not to say that Eleven can't get that way, it totally can, but you have to you have to hunt for it, really dig and decide that you want your gameplay to that next level of, of competitive nature. You've got to be like, I want to perfect my character's performance in this way. And you know, you can hunt down the tools to do that, but it's not, it's not right in your face. And that's fine. I've certainly gone there with my 11 experience sometimes because that, that's a different way to experience it and it's, it's fun in its own way. Look, what I'm getting at is 11 just did things differently, you know? And I mean, nothing was a better example of this than Treasure Hunter, which just says increases the chance that treasure will be dropped by enemies. What? By revealing how that works, they're peeling back the veil to show what's underneath and I'm not sure that's a good thing. Does more information help the players make more informed decisions about what jobs to bring, what tools to use to best complete their next task? Sure, 
But what it doesn't do is make a player keep a lucky egg in their inventory for 17 years on the off chance that it increases drop rates by 1%. It doesn't make party members still to this day complaining about the one time that I forgot the thief's knife when hunting Osa's assault jerkin. It was one time. It doesn't add to the player interactions in game and debates about whether or not Treasure Hunter is worth it. The players need to constantly run back to town to change subs before farming or hunting a notorious monster. Now there's a mathematical equation, a mathematical objective answer to all those questions. And I don't know, it's just kind of sad. Let me know your thoughts. Was Square Enix re revelation of this data a good idea? Does it enhance the overall 11 experiences to give us more insight into how the inner workings of Vanadeel are actually happening? Or is it taking something away? If you want to chat about it, come join us every Tuesday and Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Twitch. Link down in the description below. I love chatting about this stuff. Seriously. It's like all I do. Otherwise, stay thiefy, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Peace. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in more videos like this, think about subscribing. And if you already have, don't forget to click that little bell next to the sub button to get notified when new videos go live. Hit me up in the comments with your thoughts on this video, or come hang out and chat with me on Twitch every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And definitely look me up on Twitter or Instagram and hunt for games to keep up with what else I've got going on. See ya.